continue our, our focus on the, the situation in Egypt and the developments there. And we're being joined at this point by Professor Akin Oyebode, Professor of International Law from the University of Lagos. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, Prof, the, this happened um, a couple of days ago. What's your reaction? Well, um, I think the military uh, had to step in uh, to save Egypt from collapse. Uh, chaos was threatening, and the Muslim Brotherhood uh, have threatened to go for broke. So, and uh, the more than 20 million signatories to the petition uh, to change the government thought uh, they had to draw the line on the sand for the Brotherhood. And so the soldiers who had a bad reputation, you know, they had a coup in mm. uh, 1952, uh, which brought in NASA. And the last time when uh, Mubarak was uh, given the boots, the soldiers too, uh, took over and uh, mishandled the situation, so much so that uh, they were forced out. So the military are being cagey and careful uh, in order not to uh, blow whatever support uh, they were trying to get from the Egyptian people. Mm -hmm. So you can see that their moves are very calculated. Uh, they didn't want it to look like an out-and-out -out coup. Uh, but uh, it's not a question of nomenclature. Uh, in jurisprudence, we say that uh, whenever a drastic change has been brought into the polity outside of the contemplation of that constitution, uh, it amounts to a revolution. So people might go out, the jury might still be out on whether it's a coup or it's a revolution, or in fact it's a continuation of the Egyptian revolution. But it's still an unfolding scenario. So we have to await uh, the outcome uh, of the debacle. But I think so far so good. Uh, there's been tremendous support uh, throughout the Arab world, except uh, in Syria, uh, and all that. But uh, I think by and large, uh, because of the role Egypt plays in the Arab world, uh, is the epicenter of uh, Arab civilization. So because of that, uh, everybody is hoping that this time around, uh, the country will survive uh, the crisis. Now, one would think that since he was democratically elected, 20 million signatures should have stopped him in his tracks to maybe look back and say, okay, what am I doing wrong? How do I make amends? Or how do I appeal to the people to let me finish up my turn? Well, don't forget that uh, he wasn't elected by a landslide. Okay? The turnout was low, and he just made it. He merely made it. And uh, it's a pity Mercy has been toying with power. Uh, the way he confronted uh, the courts uh, last year, and his uh, alienating uh, government, which has not carried everybody along, has created a groundswell of opposition, a latent opposition, which has now surfaced. So um, despite the fact that uh, he has an American education, he has a doctorate from of Southern California, uh, where he was even an assistant professor and all that, uh, I think he ought to have demonstrated greater political savvy. Uh, so maybe he wrote his own obituary, uh, politically speaking, by his naivety. You don't toy with power because there are people waiting uh, in the wings uh, to steal your act from you. And they just played into the plot of the enemy forces. So I don't think there are many tears that will be shed uh, for mercy. Uh, you can see the sentiments expressed on the global networks by people like El Badar, mm -hmm. El Badarai, and they are even Ala Musa, and the others who failed in the country. It's very uh, to either Qatar or wherever. He, he says he will stay put Yemen. He's been offered an exile. But you can notice that this guy is a very stubborn guy, mm. uh, an engineer in power who should have, as I said, demonstrated greater uh, understanding of what needs to be done uh, for his regime to survive. Because it's still a regime. It's not, uh, Egypt is not a full democracy. And he inherited a divided country. Uh, he didn't do enough to bring all the groups together. And that was his undoing. I mean, because right now it would seem that that's what we're going to be saying in the days ahead. As you've said just before the program started, that it's still unfolding. Some people say that there is now a polarity, not just within the sections of the country, but also for those who stand on the side of democracy on one hand and another group of people who st stand on the side of the rule of law. 
do you agree, do you share this point of view? Because some people are saying democracy is for the people, of the people and by the people, and whatever they say they want a leader out, they should have, their voices should be heard. Some other people say, well, it has to be done within the framework of the rule of law. Well, the way I see it, the exit of Morsi uh, signals uh, the collapse of religious politics. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood wanted to uh, politicize religion, if you know their history. And they are not only in Egypt, they are in many of the Arab countries, especially the Gulf countries, in Bahrain, in Oman, name it. The, the Muslim Brotherhood have been a force to reckon with. They are like a political variant of uh, what you call the Taliban, uh, just the political faction of what you can call the Boko Haram uh, in Nigeria. So the attempt to come through the ballot box after decades of repression and suppression, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, forced uh, subterranean uh, organization uh, has not resulted in something of joy for the Egyptians. You know, uh, Mubarak ruled over that country uh, and uh, with a very strong fist, uh, stifling all dissenting forces. The last image I remember of the Muslim Brotherhood was their activists caged in a court for trial, for treason, and they've been given harsh sentences under the Barak regime. So I believe they should be seen as a transitional group from Mubarak to uh, a democratic uh, country. What uh, the Egyptians experienced in the last year or two from 2011, you could call it civilian rule, but not yet a democratic rule. And rule of law uh, is not cast in granite. You know, if you don't abide by the expectations Two million signatories. That's a massive force, much more than those who elected him. So I, I think he did not develop sufficient understanding of what needed to be done. And that was his undoing, if you ask me. Uh, I accept that democracy talks about the sanctity of the ballot box. But when push comes to shove, uh, the military, who are the last line of defense for any country, might feel compelled to step in. 